Good afternoon folks, it is full time reaction to Celtic 1, Mullerwell 1 here from Celtic Park. I've got Darren and Martin with me to go over what was a disappointing day. Martin, um, you can't win them all, but um, I think that's a bad day at the office for us, isn't it? Uh, right, right now, uh, immediately after the match, I feel really flat, which um, I'm sure I'm sure come tomorrow I'll feel absolutely fine and, and, and regain the pride of what we've achieved this year, because 31 out of 33, we shouldn't be sitting here disappointed, but... It wasn't so much a result, but the performance, I don't think we played well at all today as a collective team and even at the end, quite often when you're watching Celtic, you expect a, a late surge and half a dozen chances and that just didn't come today. It didn't feel like the seven minutes went up, I wasn't convinced we were going to we were going to get a goal in that seven minutes and I know we'll come to the chance it was missed and there was another couple of half chances missed, but I just didn't feel like there was a sense of urgency today and Dan and I were just talking a second ago about, yes, there's injuries in that, in that squad and that impacts the players you can bring on, which is probably we've benefited this season. We've brought on players and they've really impacted the game. But we're only missing two first-team regulars out there starting 11 and expected just a little bit more today. And I know a game we'll probably touch on about Motherwell and their tactics, but just overall feel a little bit deflated. Um, we're chasing goals and points targets as well, aren't we? So, And I've not, I've not looked at the exact number of games that we've, we've not scored two goals this season, but I think it'll only be one or two goals. We've failed mm. to score two goals. So mm. we're used to seeing two goals three goals, four goals every week and uh, today it just wasn't, it wasn't, that wasn't going to happen for us. Yeah, Darren we're still missing obviously the likes of Jota, Hatate, um, Haksabanovic, Maeda uh, out wide and midfield Iwata kept his place um, but it felt for the word go today like we just didn't have the usual speed to the play. No you're right and um, what, I'm, what I think is the big difference is that when it's not happening on 70-75 minutes we bring on those players who start the day and they make the big difference me and Martin were just saying there that Haksbanovic starts he started a few games now and he's not really made the impact but he's more of an impact player coming off the bench maybe that's just his role in the team he might not like it but that's just our opinion so far he is on the right hand side yeah, I think he's I, I affected think, by that isn't he? I think that is that because he is that kind of guy that likes to cut inside chop and change but you know when you get your chance to start living for this team which is you don't get too much for the likes of him. He needs to take it. Obviously, it's disappointing missing the likes of Jota. I think that game, I would have suited a badder down to a tee. We needed someone who was direct and a bit of pace. That was missing. Again, um, Maeda, who didn't have the best of times, because what I don't like is that when you play a low block against that kind of team, he just hugs the touchline, so he can't really come in and beat a player. That's not what kind of player he is. Bringing on players like Rocco Vata, Again, he's just a young boy, still got a lot to learn. He's not going to make a big impact these games. And then you're talking about bringing on the likes of, of David Tumble, who's hardly had any minutes. Mm. While I started, I didn't think he had the best game. In fact, I don't really think anybody had the best game. I don't want to single out anybody. That's a bit unfair. I don't really think we deserve to win the game today. Obviously, I'm going to look at the stats and stuff and say we dominate the game. That's obvious, right? But overall, that performance, I would probably say it's our worst performance this season. Mm. And, you know, that's, that might be a criticism, but it speaks volumes because, you know, we're, sitting, we're not lost. We never lost mm. the game. A point's still a point. I would, I would say it's worse than the, the game against St Mirren, but as you said at the start, we can't win every single game. We'll be like my wins for a short period of time, then we'll move on. Aye, as you said at the top, Martin, you, you, you can't win every game. Um, there is going to be a drop-off, and it's difficult when you're missing your key players. We oh. talked about it last week at Kilmarnock, how well we played without them, but um, I suppose it's only natural that without them, you, there's going to be games where, where, where you really miss them. I think Hatate in the middle of the park particularly, it's dead easy to look at a game and go, oh, we're missing our key players when they're out, but the speed through midfield even later in the game when Moy comes on Vata's out wide I thought we, we had a lot of the play down the right hand side in the last 10 minutes but not a lot came from it Vata obviously has a great ball in and O should score the header it's a sitter but aside for that I thought we are a bit sluggish a wee bit too slow through the final third Too predictable too slow too pedestrian lacking a bit of creativity I think when you've got players like Katati in particular because he's probably our, our main man just now other than Kyogo and the captain uh, we all look to Hitati for a bit of inspiration but it's decision making, it's intercepting passes, it's knowing when to pass, when to retain possession of the ball, when to pass back sideways forward. And players like Hitati just get the decision, they make those decisions. And and they they dictate the speed of the play as well, so they'll slow it down, they'll quicken it up. And I think some of the players when you talk about like Savata, again, same as Darren, don't want to single players out. Um, but you look at guys like that, at the stage of the career they're at, you want to bring them on when you're three or four up and just, you know, get, get them used to, to, to how the team plays. They're no impact players. So I wasn't inspired by any of the substitutions today, as you say, Turnbull comes on, you think he's got a goal in him, so I understood the, the reason, I think it was Taylor went off for him, wasn't it? Yeah. Understood the reason for the substitution, but it just it just wasn't wasn't our day today. I do think a lot of coming in and allowing McGregor to push up, and we heard from, from the manager at uh, the press conference this week that 
the latter has got a range of skills. He's not just a number six. So I think there's a lot more to come from him. And I do think that there's room in the team for him and McGregor. Um, whether we maybe should have given Moyer a start today, maybe he maybe should have come on a bit earlier in the game, because I know I know he hasn't been fantastic in the last couple of weeks, but maybe maybe there was a, should have been a place in the team for him at some point. But what we're lacking the most today was the width. As Darren says, Maeda didn't have the best of games. And on the other side, there was nothing happening, really, from start to finish, if I've been honest, other than a couple of crosses, which isn't enough. Um, but Motherwell came out to frustrate, and we played them here earlier in the season. I don't know if you remember the game, but that was a 2-1 two two one as well. Yeah, eh? yeah. And McGregor had to get a red card to, to salvage the, the points that day, because Motherwell were, were chasing the equaliser. So they've obviously proven that you know that's a, not a one-off result. Mm. I don't think they've beaten us for a long time. But they've been in decent form as well. Ah, they've been in decent form. They've turned a the corner, changed change in the the personnel and the, the coaching staff, uh, the manager coming in. Um, but uh, they've proven early in the season they can come here and, 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 um, and match Celtic, and, and today they were certainly a match for us. Mm. Just on Mallerow, Darren, um, they only really had one big chance in the game, and it, it was Van Veen who, again, is in, is in really great good form. And it, it's, it's a great finish. Um, it comes down our left-hand side, a bit on the break, what was your view of it? Well, it's the chance you always take when we play such a high line. The ball just, I don't know if it's a pass or a clearance, but it gets put over the corner. Van Veen initially, he's running towards the corner, and Greg Taylor's marking him, but it stands so far off him that it allows Van Veen to cut inside. Mm. It's really poor and unlike Greg Taylor this season. And then Van Veen just does the rest. He's a very good player. I think he's had 19 goals he scored this season, roughly about that. So, you know, it's the chance you always take when you play such a high line that you're vulnerable to a counter-attack. Mm. But after that, the game just became a bit of a circus, didn't it? It was just, it was just a drama show. I mean, Liam Kelly, uh, Liam Kelly man, that, 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 that is ridiculous. Look, and we we talk about this from us. We're Celtic fans, right? So we're also going to be, so we we're always going to be really, really frustrated, right? But you think of a team like Motherwell, who are kind of down that bottom end of the table, and they're coming to Celtic Park, the home of team, the team that are blowing teams away this season. Part of me does kind of sympathise with them and not understand why they're going to do it. Mm. You need to look at the referee and th think as well. The referee knows, John Beaton, he knows what they're doing. So part of him kind of need to step in and say, look, I know what you're doing, right? But play the game a wee bit. He's kind of get away with that. John Beaton just turned his back. Every time a Motherwell player went down, he sat over him, realised, OK, whatever. And then he let the, the medics come on. And they were, you know, they, they're in on it as well. So going for, like, I don't know if it's just, is it just maybe us being Celtic fans and th thinking, like, I mean, maybe just exaggerating a wee bit because I don't know because we see it every single week mm. we're obviously supporting the best team in the league I don't know how teams uh, supporters of other teams feel about this but it, it can be really frustrating you're sitting there watching a game we've not really complained about it too much because we've got away with getting late winners this season we were just throwing a, throwing, a, throwing a tantrum because we didn't win today I don't know Aye, I think you expect it as well. You expect it for teams coming here. Um, I think if we were away from home against a big team in Europe with a result to cling on to, um, even though this is not how Ange Postacoglu's team play, you'd expect that um, when you're the underdogs. Martin, um, top six is confirmed now. Um, I think the home games for us will be Hearts and St Mirren, I'm right in saying. Is it? I is think it? so, is it? Um, and then we've got Hibs, Aberdeen and Rangers away. I think we can only equal the points record now. Um, that's how bad it is. We can only equal the best ever points record. Um, how do you feel about next week? Uh, off the back of today, obviously we're, we're waiting on the likes of Hatati and Jota, but um, you get any concerns going next week after today? So I, d I didn't know that Hearts was confirmed at home, but maybe it is St Mirren definitely is, isn't it? St Mirren at home, Rangers away. At home. I can't remember, we've just played Hibs recently at home, so I right, think we might right. be away to them. Right, OK. Because I, I was unsure whether it was Hibs, Hearts or Aberdeen. Two out of those three are definitely away, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. But Hearts at home would be, would be good. Um, I think we can get 107, I think. Right. Somebody will need to do the math while I'm talking, but I think we can get 107 because <laughs> we're, well, we're chasing 109 and we've dropped two today, so okay. I think we can get 107. Maybe we can still make it. If we, we can make that. Win them all. <laughs> not sure about the goal record because we're chasing this 116 goals, 117 yeah. goals, eh? Not so, sure about so that after still today. We need 13 for five games. Uh, it's doable. a big ask. Still yeah. doable. Still doable. Uh, and that's the equal, isn't it? 13, so we need 14 for five games to beat it. So yeah. it's, it is doable. Yeah. So going into next week, I, I don't know how much, you know, sometimes in the eve of a big game like that, whether you mean it or you don't mean it, because I'm sure the players don't mean it, and, and managers get asked this all the time, mm. um, how can you keep the players focused? Because the league's done, right? I mean, th that result means absolutely nothing in the context of winning the league. Mm -hmm. um, it maybe impacts when we win the league, but it's not going to prevent us winning the league. So if you're a player going into that game today and you've got one eye on next week, you know, do, do you really give 100%? You don't, you don't mean to go out there and not give 100% because you want to go out and win and score goals and be man of the match, but I wonder how many of those players today are off the mindset that they're a guaranteed starter next week and you know they've not they've not given their all. I just that, that's what it felt like today. It's like right? the kind of the mentality that the league's done and 
probably the focus is on next week. It's all about next week. Today will take care of itself, you know, we're mm -hmm. going to blow them away, you know, somebody else will make a bit more effort than me, but you don't do that on purpose. It's just mm -hmm. there's, there's something in your mind and your body that, that makes you not, not try it. So that's what it felt like today. Mm -hmm. um, but next week, I think a lot of it comes down to who's our starting to live in and are they all fit? Because how often do you see players getting put out on the pitch and then you find that after the game they weren't 100% fit, mm -hmm. eh? So I hope we obviously all hoping and praying that Hattie and Jota play at Carter Vickers plays. Um, thought the manager's answer to the Carter Vickers question yesterday about has he got a, a niggling injury. Mm. Um, he didn't show it today. I thought he was I thought he was his usual good self today. But we all want Jota and, and um, Jota and, and Hattie to play. And then on top of that, we need we need a good. Who's going to play? Will it be O'Reilly or will it be Moy? Not quite sure. Will Iwata get a game? With Have you got a concern about Hattie? Because next week it'll be five weeks since his last game. So even if he is available, would you put him in for the start? Is that a risk? I just think his his fitness is incredible. I mean, we heard the gaffer talking about Iwata, Iwata and how he's in the gym every single day. And he's, I think the Japanese lads, that's just that's just the way they behave. That's a culture, you know, the way they live their lives, the way that their diet, their exercise, all that. Hatati's one we've talked about before, we say his exercise is, is, is off the scale. You mm -hmm. know, you see his warm downs at the end of games and stuff. I think it's an obsession with some of these players and I think Hatati's of that ilk. So I don't, I'm not concerned about his match fitness. Uh, I haven't only been out for, I know it's five weeks is a long time, but mm -hmm. equally it's not eight weeks, it's not ten weeks, it's, it's five. So I would play Hatati every single day of the week if he's fit, if he's not got a niggling injury. Mm -hmm. um, and same with Jota, I'd tough him in and then I don't know where bad is in his, his return. Sometimes you hear that these players are nowhere near and they, and they appear, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And, and actually, and, vice versa as well. aye, aye. <laughs> and they appear and they're fit, or they appear yeah. and are they fit? Maybe a yeah. manager's keeping the wee card up his sleeve, we don't know. Aye, aye. hopefully. He but if, if we get our best 11 and it's a fit 11, mm -hmm. we should absolutely destroy Rangers. You know, you look at their players, I'm not sure I can name their 11. I mean, Rangers were good, you could name their 11, you're waiting up to the night <laughs> thinking about their players, eh? Because they were that good. I'm going, away, I'm going back a long time. Yeah, yeah. But you couldn't name their 11 now, they're not a good side, and Celtic on paper are significantly better, so. Going to the game with a lot of confidence, mm. and today's performance will not have an impact on next week's game, that's for sure. Yeah, we all need to play a lot better, though. There you go, that's it for full time reaction here from Celtic Park. Like this video, comment your own thoughts on today's game below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We will see you during the week for the build up to that big semi final at Hamden. Cheers.